My dear friends, welcome to Raj Shekhar classes on Applied Data Science with Python. This is lecture number 417. In this lecture, we will try to understand boosting. Another popular ensemble technique is called boosting. In this lecture, we will try to get intuitive understanding of how boosting works. Before we go and understand boosting, let's try to compare it with the bagging let's try to quickly recap bagging for you what is bagging bagging basically what you have high variance and low bias models as your base models and when you do randomization on top of it what type of randomization do you typically employ we employ column sampling, row sampling and also choosing random threshold especially in the case of extremely randomized trees and we apply aggregation operation like majority vote. We, we, we took our, our base models which have this property. What are the, What is the property? High variance and low bias. And we use these two techniques, randomization and aggregation, to reduce variance, keep the bias low. That's the core strategy of bagging. In the case of boosting, in the case of boosting, we would do as follows. For our base model, instead of, for our base models, instead of high variance and low bias, we would actually do low variance we will actually do low variance low variance low uh, low variance and high bias models we would actually imply low variance and high bias models and instead of randomization and aggregation here just we are doing randomization and aggregation instead of randomization and aggregation we use something called additive combining just see we are using additive combining or additively combining we will try to combine those models additively so we reduce the bias just see we reduce bias high bias high bias means what we have to reduce the bias as as we have high high variance just see here in the case of bagging we have high variance in, the, in, in you you have to you have high variance we try to we we we, we try to reduce the variance in here we try to reduce the variance keep the bias keep the bias low that is bagging isn't it because at the end of the day your error your generalization error is basically have bias term just see what is error error equal to what is the generalization error you have bias term variance term and irreducible error just see bias term you have you have what is this bias term variance term irreducible error isn't it yes your variance is anyway low that's what we are saying low variance isn't it your variance your variance is a, a anyway low is, isn't it and low we, so we want to reduce our you we want to reduce our bias why because it's a low variance isn't it we, we want to reduce our bias while keeping our variance low we will do this by using something called additive combining of course there are many ways of there are many ways of boosting we will look into one specific technique called gradient boosting isn't it very very popular technique yes what is the purpose uh, of uh, additive combining uh, it's to reduce bias while keeping our variance low isn't it now what is this gradient boosting just say we, we will we will look into one specific technique called gradient boosting very very popular technique and very very powerful technique but before we go and understand gradient boosting there are there are simple ideas there are simple ideas we need to understand isn't it what are those simple ideas 
boosting isn't it let let me explain core idea on how boosting reduces the bias boosting has to reduce bias isn't it well, high bias means you have to reduce the bias boosting has to reduce the bias that the whole goal that's i that's the goal of this tech that's the goal because your base learners already have low bias and high low low, low variance your base learner, learners all your base learners already have low variance just see your base learners have low variance just a minute yes low variance and uh, your base learners uh, uh, already have low variance and high bias which we which we want to reduce this high bias we have to reduce bias while keeping our variance low isn't it let's take an example let's go through the core idea on how it works we will go to specific algorithm in next few lectures imagine i am given a training data set let me say d train which is equal to xi comma yi i runs from 1 to n this is my training data what i will do here first i will train a model on the whole training data i will take whole my training data my after taking what is my zeroth step in zeroth step d train on d train i will try to build my model of course you can either build classification model or a regression model boosting boosting lets you do either of them build a classification model or regression model the way it works is this let me call this is my m0 let me say let is me say this is let me say this is my call this is m0 the first model that i will build i will build on whole of my d training this my first model is m0 which is which is built on d train we said this base model need to have high bias and low variance isn't it this base models need to have high bias and low variance an example of an example of high bias and low variance model is if you think about it one simple example is a decision tree which is shallow which is not too deep typically depth of 1 or 2 or maybe 3 this is one good example of high bias and low variance model so now when i train model when i train the model i have taken all of my xi comma yi i runs from 1 to n one when i am training when i am training the model since i am saying that the model has bias what does it mean that means the training error what does high bias mean high bias if you if you remember our dis, our our discussion on bias variance trade off we gave intuitive understanding what high bias means high bias high bias can be thought of as high training error or large training error this is one intuitive interpretation of what high bias means so what happens is when i train a model in in stage zero when i took my d train when when i took my d train my whole training data I train a model zero let's assume model zero let me say it's a model zero fit fit a function fit a function h y equal to h zero x let's assume it's model zero try to fit a function this y equal to h naught x now what what I will do here is since I have all my x i comma y i we are going from i equal to 1 to n since this model has high bias since this model is designed to have high bias i have large training error which means if i take each after train my model first i will i will train my model what is my model here high bias high bias implies large training error isn't it high bias implies large training error i will take each of my points 
and subtract h naught x from it h naught x because h naught x is what the modal m naught is all about when i subtract them this error y i minus y i minus h naught of x i is equal to error of i error is basically like difference the error makes sense this error makes sense remember we looked at lots lots of types of errors we looked at squared error we looked at logistic error we looked at loss error we looked at hinge loss hinge hinge error this is very very uh, very very i can say this is very very simple uh, simple difference simple this is not even squared error but let's call this is this is error i this is very very simple error very simple difference error i am simply taking the difference between y i and h not x i this is simple difference error this makes sense in regression setting in the classification setting instead of this you could have used logistic loss or logistic error between y i and h not x now i got error for each data point for each x i now i have corresponding y i and error i for each point in my training data what is my training data x i comma y i comma error i i equal to 1 to n for each of my points because my base model is high bias model it has large training error isn't it my base model what is my base model is high bias model it has large training error that means your error is non trivial it's fairly large they are non trivial that's important in stage 1 in stage 1 in since i trained a model in stage 0 what i will do this in st in stage 1 in stage 1 i will try to find model m1 instead of taking my d train that is important instead of taking my d train as training data actually i will take xi what will i take actually i will take xi comma this i will take actually i will take x i comma error i equal to 1 to n as my training data for m1 this is important in stage 1 i will try to fit a model m1 this is model m1 isn't it i will try to fit a model m1 instead of taking i am not taking d train uh, instead of taking my d train instead of taking my d train i am not taking this d train as training data actually i am taking x i comma error of i error i i equal to 1 to n as my training data this is training data for my for m1 so this x i comma error i i equal to 1 to n becomes my training data this is my training data for whom for model m1 at the end of m1 remember m1 is not m1 is not training on yis m1 is training on error i that we got after stage 0 now let's assume i get a function h1 x here i train a function h1 x which is equal to my error i i i will say my final model at the end of first stage here is my capital f1 of x equal to what is model at the end of stage 1 h not x is at zeroth stage and i computed h1 x at stage m1 h1 x i equal to error of i what is that error of i y i minus h not x i this we already discussed in previous slide what is error i y i minus h not of x i it, it tries to it, it tries to predict this the model at the end of the last iteration or stage 1 is equivalent is equivalent to we will try to find we will try to find what you will try to find f1 x equal to alpha naught h naught x alpha 1 h1 x now at, at the end of stage 1 now i will try to i will go to stage 2 at stage 2 i will go to stage 2 what i will do in stage 2 in stage 2 i i, I will again take each my xi and i will again compute error i here error i 
will uh, will be i already have two models what are the two models here my two models are my two models are this one h not x is one model h1 x is another model isn't it anyway just try to try to understand i have two models h not x and h1 x and try to understand what is h1 x i which is equal to error i just try to go through this particular lecture i will continue my lecture on boosting in lecture number 418 also this lecture may be little bit uh, maybe it's uh, it involves little bit mathematics but you will get clarity after maybe in next lecture you will you will get clarity on this boosting intuition i will complete intuition of boosting in my next lecture that is lecture number 418 thank you very much